Manchester United's 4-0 defeat to Everton at Goodison Park was nothing short of embarrassing. And all United fans were in agreement with Gary Neville when he said that in his post-match interview on Sky Sports. Now, in what was an impassioned rant, Gary went into a lot of points. He was talking about the deep-rooted problems at the club, the players, the fans, Solskjaer, the structure. Lots of points that he discussed about the issues at Manchester United now. So what I want to do in this video today is run through the points that Gary raised in a bit more detail. Question them and give my own opinion on those same points. And as always, I want to hear what you've got to say about Gary's points as well in the comments below. Now, before we do get into the video and before we begin, make sure you subscribe if you are new to United People's TV. Lots of content like this on the channel, so make sure you get involved. But let's get straight into it. Now, Gary's first point was on the money about where the problems lie at United. Uh, I'm furious, to be honest with you. The fact that he's had to go over and apologise for them. I've often said that clubs over the last seven years, if you've got weeds in the garden, you've got to get rid of them. But there's some Japanese knotweed at that football club. And it's attacking the foundations of the house that needs dealing with properly. Now, this point from Gary, it's not a new one. It's one that we've been talking about for years and years. Because until United properly restructure the club from the bottom up, nothing will ever be resolved at the club. We'll have purple patches like we did under Solskjaer. We have purple patches under Moyes. Or did we? Van Howe and Mourinho. But the problems will never be truly resolved until the roots are ripped out. And that is an issue where I do have with Gary's point. Because at no point does he mention the Glazers. And for me, the Glazers are the root of the problem. If a set of owners can take out one billion plus in interest repayments since buying the club on a leveraged deal... That's a problem. If Ed Woodward, the Glazers' puppet, is still in charge of the footballing decisions despite being a money man, that's the root of a problem. So while Gary is correct in identifying that the roots need to be pulled out, I'm a bit frustrated that he doesn't name the Glazers really directly as part of that issue. Because there is Japanese knotweed at this club. It's got its roots tied around our neck. And until the Glazers go, Will that ever leave? It might loosen. We might sign players like Popper or Sanchez, but it will never truly go. And that's a real worry because Fergie was able to manage the Glazers and still maintain success. But I'm not sure anybody else will. Now, the next point that Gary raises is about the support that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has from the fans. The idea that Ole, a few weeks ago, I said that, you know, Jose Mourinho, the fans stuck with him, but wanted him out at the end. They ain't going to want Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out. They're not going to turn Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Those players now, the well and truly, their heads are on the line. Ole is loved. He's, an, he's a genuine legend of the club. For me, he's my all-time favourite player. And he has got a level of support with the fans that Mourinho didn't have, that Van Gaal didn't have, and that Moyes didn't have. A true affection and affinity with his roots in United that those managers didn't have. So Gary is right. The fans won't turn on Solskjaer. And to be fair, it took a long time for us all to turn on Moyes van Gaal Mourinho. United's fan base is a strong fan base and everyone is absolutely behind Solskjaer. So finally, or maybe not finally, but as far as I'm concerned, the finger is pointing solely at the players because if the problems have existed under three different managers and now a fourth one, maybe the problem isn't just the manager and it's with the players, and that is one point Gary raises really clearly. I watched Manchester City yesterday, who Manchester United are trying to get to in terms of the top of the football, uh, top of the Premier League in Liverpool. Bernardo Silva, Raheem Sterling, Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, far better players than are in that Manchester United dressing room who work twice as hard. Everton run four kilometres further in the first half. Everton. And then you watch this mob out here, Liverpool, who are the biggest rivals. They die for every single inch on the pitch. And Manchester United players, honestly, it's embarrassing just watching some of those out there today. I'm absolutely furious. Full belief in Ola to do what he needs to do. The club obviously will support him, but it's a big problem. And I have to say that performance today was rancid. Honestly, there's only a handful of players in this United squad that I would be upset to not see play for United again. Rashford, De Gea, Pogba, Shaw, Lingard, I like Lingard. I think McTominay as well, Delot's got talent. 
But genuinely, 75% of this Manchester United squad is absolutely replaceable with better players. Players that want to play for the shirt they are wearing. Players that are going to put in the effort that is required to play for Manchester United. Every single player who does not have the attitude, forget, forget talent. I've been sort of, if you like, over the last maybe 12 to 18 months, myself falling into the trap of talking about, oh, they've got potential, they've got talent. Forget it. If they don't work hard and haven't got the attitude to run around in that shirt, get rid of them. Because I'm watching players out here play for Liverpool, I'm watching players yesterday play for Manchester City, and they're working their absolute backsides off every single week for their football club. And I'm watching Manchester United players on that football pitch walk around, saunter around, jogging back. I saw it in Barcelona the other night in the new camp. And I, I don't mind losing games. I actually don't mind them conceding goals. I don't mind them giving passes away. I was one of the best at it at giving the ball away. But do you know something? You do not, whatever you do, drop below the standard of work ethic that is expected at that club, and they're falling below it. And for me here, Gary is absolutely 100% right to slam their work ethic because running around the pitch isn't the be-all and end-all measure of a good football team. But it makes you a lot harder to beat. Manchester United always had a fear factor because every player gave 110%. There was no slacking. There was no real clear weakness in a squad because everybody was committed 100% of the time. And you can't say that about many or any of these Manchester United players. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a rebuild. And I'm sure it's what Gary is alluding to as well. Because until you get rid of the players that don't have that attitude, Players like Sanchez, that really can just let a game pass them by and not really give two shits. You're never going to be able to properly restructure a team. I mean, Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, I hate talking about their success, but they're successful because they've got a manager in and all the players are pointing in the same direction. And until United have that in the squad and with Solskjaer, we're just going to be banging our heads against a brick wall. Gary wasn't the best player in the world. But he made the most of his talent through sheer hard work. Darren Fletcher wasn't the best player in the world. But he was committed the whole game and every fan loved him for it. Scott McTominay is not the best player in the world. But we're seeing more from him in the last few weeks when the chips are down. Than we are from players who are on four, five, six, seven, eight times the wages. That's what United fans need to see in the squad. I know that it's naive for me to want all my players in my club to genuinely want to play for the shirt that they're wearing. That won't happen anymore, not in modern football, not with the money that there is in the game. But I can definitely see more of it. And we can definitely sign the right players that tick that box and want to work for Solskjaer because there are so many passengers in this squad that are gonna get sold this summer because they're not. And that needs to happen. Because let's be honest, there's not that many players in the squad that show that sort of commitment. And I've lost faith in so many of these players and Gary feels that Oli has too. And we got a little bit of a bounce when Oli came into the job and everyone was blaming Jose Mourinho, oh, he's a bum, he's a bad manager. Jose Mourinho is one of the success most successful managers of the last 20 years in football, a great manager. And in the end, he lost all faith in those players. I would imagine now, the more Ole Gunnar Solskjaer watches in those players, the more he will be losing faith in them because they're letting him down and they're letting the club down. Solskjaer was immediately ruthless when he got rid of Marouane Fellaini only a few weeks after becoming Man United manager because he realised straight away he wasn't a United player. And a few months down the line, there's going to be a plenty more players in that same boat. And after that loss against Everton, there was one quote for me that stood out from Solskjaer. I'm, I'm going to be successful here. And the players there that won't be part of that successful team. That is what you want to hear from a United manager. Now, Jose said the same sort of thing, but... He was unable to get everybody on board with him because players clashed. But Solskjaer is United through and through. He'll pull the players in the same direction that the club wants to pull the players. And if there's anybody in that squad, and there's plenty of them, that don't want to pull in that direction, they're simply going to be sold in the summer. Goodbye. But unfortunately, as we all know, it's not as simple as signing new players because the structure at Manchester United is light years behind our competitors. And that is the point that Gary makes towards the end of his run. I, I am concerned because I said before the game today, this idea that Manchester United only won the league a few years ago and now he's gone. They're in the wilderness. Seven years. And 
where do you see the next league title coming from? Yeah, things can be turned around quickly, but good decisions, big decisions have to be made quickly. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer alluded in his press conference on Friday that he needed to rebuild this team and rebuild this squad, and obviously that's a fact. But he also said he needed a few transfer windows. Who, Real Madrid are rebuilding, Bayern Munich are rebuilding, Arsenal are rebuilding, City will get players, Liverpool will go and get players, Barcelona need some players, Manchester United are in a world where they need to compete with those teams to get the best players into the club. Who is rebuilding this squad for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, for the Manchester United fans? I've asked that question from Christmas, I've asked it now since the start of the season. I don't believe at this moment in time there is anybody there to be able to rebuild that club from a football point of view in the way in which it needs to be built. Might be proved wrong, might be completely out of order saying it, but at this moment in time, the evidence is there that something is fundamentally wrong. Again, this isn't something new. This is something that we've seen for years, and that makes it worse because the problems still exist, if not, they're worse because they've been left to fester for so long. But the structure does need to change. And until you don't have the money men making footballing decisions at Man United, one of the biggest football clubs in the world, you're not going to act like a football club properly. That much is simple. Reports are now suggesting that Mike Phelan could become the first technical director in the history of United with Carrick getting pushed up to assistant manager. And while I'd have my concerns of that, simply because it might be a shortcut decision going for Phelan instead of looking outside, at least it will be somebody in control of the footballing decisions at the club who knows the club inside out. That will be a step in the right direction. But there is one major issue that still lies with this. If Mike Phelan comes in, he has to be in control of every footballing decision at the club. Because if Ed Woodward's hands are still involved in these decisions, then hiring Mike Phelan means absolutely nothing. It will just be nothing but lip service just to please people who feel the structure of United is wrong. Until Woodward is taken completely away from the footballing side of United, the problems will never, ever be resolved. And that's down to the Glazers, because he is the Glazers' pooch. He was the accountant that helped the Glazers take over the club with their leverage deal. He is the man now somehow involved in signing Sanchez, Schweinsteiger, oh, Jesus, how many players he's been involved with that have gone wrong. That has to stop for United to rebuild. And if it doesn't, I think Gary sums up exactly what's gonna happen. And yes, there was an amazing three months when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer take over. When he first took over the job, I didn't, I didn't expect that he would, he would get the job. He deserves the job. Now he needs to be trusted and believed in. I never wanted David Moyes to be sacked. I never wanted Louis van Gaal to be sacked. And I never wanted Jose Mourinho to be sacked because I never fundamentally believed that it was a managerial problem. I certainly don't want Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to fall by the wayside because I love him to bits. And the Manchester United fans that you've just seen love him to bits. So to protect him and get him successful, which is what we need to get the club back where it needs to be, that means he's going to have to be supported incredibly by good recruitment, good support on the football side, and making sure that United can get back there. And that's a massive, massive job. And he won't be able to do that on his own. The job of being Manchester United manager is now too big for one man, too big for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He needs that right support network behind him for it to be a success. And that will never happen at United unless this root cause analysis happens. Take out the problems, put in the solutions. And that hasn't happened for years. It's why we've sort of gone around in circles, sacked a manager, couple of years down the line, do the same thing again. Unfortunately, the same thing will happen to Solskjaer. He will fail unless that right support team is behind him. And I do fear as to whether that will truly happen at United while the Glazers own the club and while Ed Woodward is still employed at the club. But as an eternal optimist, I'll hope that we can get it right. But after years and years and years of fucking about, making the wrong decisions, with the wrong people making those decisions, it's about time United started acting like one of the biggest clubs in the world and not a non-league outfit because we're so far behind Real Madrid and Barcelona, who Gary said there, we're, we're going to be competing to sign players against these clubs. We've got to buck our ideas up. It's not just about offering the most money. It's about offering the most chance of success because ambitious players want trophies. And unfortunately, right now, United is not the place where those players are going to get the trophies. But let's see what changes. 
Now, what do you think about Gary Neville's points in this rant after the Everton game? I think he raises a lot of good points. I'm concerned that he's still not really mentioning the Glazers as a problem at the club, but I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments as always. Now, if you are new to United People's TV and you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe down there and get involved. But until next time, take it easy.